On the 25th of May, SSO released their first anti-cheat program in Star Stable, GameGuard. And since its application, it has wreaked havoc in the community. From login issues to crashes to getting kicked for just logging on, being accused of cheating when you're not doing anything, to a slew of other problems that have been reported to SSO. I held off on the video for the sole purpose of seeing Star Stable's response to these problems, and they did finally respond in an article which I will be looking at as we progress through this video. Before I move into the video proper, I need to briefly cover the reactions to our hashtag SSO Save the Movies movement we had on the 25th of May. First off, I would like to thank everyone who participated. This means a lot to the creators who are reliant on this bug to make their films. And also, a big thank you to Star Stable for responding and for taking the situation seriously. Seriously. Although they have made a lot of mistakes in the past and continuously make them today, this is a step in a good direction and it should be acknowledged despite everything that's going on. So, SSO, thank you for listening to us. Now, unfortunately, we have to get into the negatives again and sadly, it's a pretty big negative off of something so positive. Hopefully by the end of the video though, I would have explained exactly what Game God is, how anti-cheats work, how cheats work, what are the concerns and why it's a necessary evil, although not a very effective one always. I'm going to be very clear, my information is coming from third-party sources. I do not have the knowledge nor the know-how of how these applications function. But Google is my friend, a lot of users who are willing to help out with the research, and of course Reddit. What will I do without you guys? So, if I do get anything wrong, don't hesitate to let me know, I'm always open to learning something new. GameGuard is, in short, an anti-cheat program that uses an unorthodox method to keep cheaters out. In technical terms, it uses rootkits in the kernel to help prevent players from using unstable drivers to cheat in games. That's a mouthful, but I'll explain in a second. For now, just know that GameGuard only launches with the game. It's not a program that runs constantly, only when the game launches will GameGuard launch as well. But it has created so many problems and is not very effective in keeping cheaters out, as we can see. This is a cheater that got in, like, I think two days ago. So yeah, no, the anti-cheat program is not keeping the cheaters out. In response to these growing issues, SSO tried to assure our worries about GameGuard with a brief article, stating about how they are working to fix the problems and solving the issues. But one quote in particular has a lot of people's hackles rising. Is GameGuard a legitimate and safe project? GameGuard is safe and will not harm your computer in any way. It is in our strongest interest to make sure that our players can play Star Stable in a safe way, which is why we would never add any malicious programs to our game and your computer. Many think this is a blatant lie, and it is and it isn't at the same time. Everyone is freaking out because of the bogey word rootkit and the dangerous and problems that go along with it. But why is everyone freaking out over these rootkits and kernels? And is it dangerous? So, the way I understand it, a rootkit is a tool that can embed itself into the kernel or core of an operating system like Windows or Linux. The idea of a rootkit is to remain undetected. It hides itself from other processors or scanners and can disguise itself as a driver or other software to prevent discovery. Now, the kernel of your operating system, where it can hide, is in essence the center of your PC and the core of your protection ring. There are four parts of this protection ring. Three rings and then the core center where the kernel is situated. Each ring offers a different level of privilege and security. Going from the outside in, ring 3 is the lowest level of security. This is kind of like the face of your PC, where you can see the desktop, launch your games and run your programs. You need almost no level of security to access these applications. Ring 1 and 2 has drivers, which require a bit more security to keep the operating system safe. And finally, we have the kernel. This software contains the control of the entire operating system. Now, a rootkit can embed itself into one of these rings, but if it's in the kernel, it essentially usurps all authority, even the admin authority, which is the highest authority you can access as a user. So, if you're trying to see which processes are currently running, and the rootkit is embedded in the kernel, it can quietly remove itself from the list because its authority is higher than yours. And that's what makes it so dangerous. Because it can escape detection, it can easily do or hide anything, like malware. The rootkit itself is not malware, but it opens the door for malware and other malicious software. Meaning, once a company gets that foothold on your system, you instantly become vulnerable to malicious software. This in turn can be used to steal your information, read keystrokes or create more backdoors for other programs to become embedded in your system. And it will slowly turn your computer into a zombie computer because in essence you've lost all control of it and its brain functions are now being controlled by the malware or malicious software and it's trying to eat your face. The problem we need to mention is this little rootkit can get control and infect 
everything. I mean everything, from software to firmware to even hardware. It can essentially ruin your entire computer because it can get control of the PC's brain functions, to put it very simplistically. And this means even formatting a computer will not always get rid of the rootkit. They are determined little buggers. So this all sounds pretty damn terrifying, and as many of us have seen, the players are in short freaking the heck out, and for good reason. But there is more to this than just these horror stories, because cheat programs are getting more and more effective, and really, there isn't a whole lot of answers to keeping them out. So how do cheat programs work? Because we need to understand a cheat program before we can understand an anti-cheat. I'm not going to go into too much depth, but we do need to at least understand the rudimentary of it. So there are a ton of ways people can cheat, from diving into the code and editing it directly, to editing system software to read the code differently, running an extra program in the background that gives you an advantage in game, or just using lag to jump ahead in races. I think some people have at least seen these lag users in championships in SSO. But what it comes down to is a cheater's communication between their PC, or client and star stable or server they are connecting to is different than it should be. So, for example, the horse should run 40 miles an hour, but the cheat lets the horse run 100 miles an hour. This will send up a red flag because the communication between your client and the server is different than it is with the rest of the world. Now, an anti-cheat actually scans your PC for these anomalies or small differences. And when your communication is different, you get shut down. Some of you have experienced Game God where you're randomly thrown out of the game and claimed you were cheating. What is most likely happening is Game God is seeing an anomaly in your communication with the server and so it has thrown you out. This is something SSO really needs to look into and fix. But now we come to the next problem. Many cheat programs run in lower protection rings like the first or second or even the kernel to avoid detection. So the only way to combat those cheats is to run an anti-cheat through the kernel. If an anti-cheat software runs on the kernel level, it by extension has access to all other rings and can, without your permission, shut down applications that run cheats and so keep cheaters out more effectively. Having that power and permission is a great boon for an anti-cheat. But Game God once again fails at the first hurdle. It is flagging Discord as a possible cheat program, and this has many people up in arms. But the rootkit-based anti-cheat is a no-brainer. Cheaters need to be flushed out, and the only way to do that is to dive into the parts of the system they're trying to hide in. Now, some of these anti-cheats do have workarounds. There will always be workarounds, make no mistake. A day or so after the Game God was installed on SSO, cheaters were already found in-game. The footage looping right now is one such instance. So despite being the most most effective, it's still not effective enough. And GameGuard itself really isn't a very effective rootkit anti-cheat, let's be honest. Now that we've covered what rootkits are and why they are a necessary evil in the battle against cheaters, we now need to turn that lens to GameGuard and ask ourselves why is it such a bad anti-cheat in the first place? A good anti-cheat will embed itself into the processes and systems that it requires to run. GameGuard unfortunately hooks itself into systems that it has no business being in, and that causes all of the crashes and issues. It's essentially a very poorly designed anti-cheat because it's not optimized. Here is an anecdote from a player who installed GameGuard around 10 to 20 years back. I'm going to be using some newer sources, but let's just get into this for a second. The game Shia comes bundled with the game Guard Client, which is designed to be an anti-cheat program. Shia, as it turned out, wouldn't run at all on my PC due to my security software, and after much digging around on the World Wide Web, I discovered the cause. Not Shia nor my security software, but GameGuard was to blame. With users of other security suites reporting similar issues with games which feature GameGuard's anti-piracy software. The problem I had was the rebooting of my PC whenever my son tried to run the Shia game. My research turned up the fact that essentially the way GameGuard operates is to disable the security software, in my case Komodo's Firewall Pro. Because my firewall saw GameGuard's attempt to close it down as a hostile attack, perhaps as a virus or a Trojan, it struck back at GameGuard, causing both to crash and the PC to reboot. Because the way GameGuard installs itself, it is similar to a rootkit, an item or collection of software programs designed to take control of a PC, GameGuard installs and cloaks itself by attaching almost virus-like to legitimate Windows processes. As a standalone product, even removing the game from the system doesn't uninstall the GameGuard software, leaving behind several hidden files. Even clicking uninstall via the Windows Device Manager fails to remove it. 
GameGuard would also continue to use the PC's RAM and resources, injecting itself into running processes without the knowledge of the user. Even in Windows Task Manager, GameGuard doesn't show itself as a running process, and it masks its huge CPU outlay by hooking into legitimate Windows components. The simplest solution is to not play games with which feature GameGuard as part of its application. You might end up disappointed, but prevention is better than cure and you'll thank yourself in the long run. Now, this story is of course a good few years back, 2008 to be precise, and GameGuard might be better today. But Katato, a very friendly user, was kind enough to share some more stories that are more recent. On a forum of the game Blade and Soul, players were complaining about GameGuard as a whole, telling stories of how the game would shut down when they were using innocuous software. They further explained the ease with which it was broken into, citing numerous Discord forums that will show you how to bypass the cheat program. Now, to be fair, most cheat programs can be bypassed, but GameGuard seems to be particularly bad at keeping cheaters from, well, cheating. But why would SSO use this particular service when there are more viable or at least efficient products on the market? Most likely because its license is only $15,000 a month. I could be wrong on this, but from what I could see, this is a pretty inexpensive licensing fee. And seeing as they make millions a year, well, yeah. Another reason StarStable is using GameGuard has to do with privacy. So it says in their post, why did you pick their GameGuard product? When we searched for a partner to help us with the anti-cheat software, INCA has been the only company that agreed to our terms on strict data protection for our players. To accommodate our terms, they provided us with a custom implementation to be sure no personal data is stored or collected by them. So is this true? Does GameGuard actually keep you safe from having your information shared? I actually do think so. Because it falls under the General Data Protection Regulation or GDPR in the EU, it actually prevents them from collecting or sharing data. This means that according to this regulation, a company is only allowed to share your personal data lawfully, aka with your consent. In the US, I understand it, it works a little differently and I quote, Since there are no federal privacy laws regulating many companies, they're pretty much free to do what they want with the data. Unless a state has its own data privacy law, in most states companies can use share or sell data, they they collect about you without notifying you that they're doing so. Now, both Anti-Cheat and Battle Eye are blatant in showing that they collect data. Now, whether they share it is something else, as these companies' headquarters are in Finland and Germany, both falling under the EU as well. But the point is, falling under the GTPR is good, and GameGuard does fall under it. Here is a direct comparison, for interest's sake, between EU law and US law. Europe's Comprehensive Privacy Law General Data Protection Regulation requires companies to ask for permission to share data and gives individuals rights to access, delete or control the use of that data. The United States, in contrast, doesn't have a single law that covers the privacy of all types of data. Instead, it has a mix of laws that go by acronyms designed to target only specific types of data in special, often outdated, circumstances. But I went a step further, I went so far as to ask GamerGuard directly if they shared data, and here was their response. Thank you for requiring through our company website. Basically, our anti-cheats are loosened in Pricked GameGuard, comply with GDPR rules. Therefore, we do not collect any personal information. So, GameGuard does not collect personal data. That is at least one boon for this company and a definite truth. They are not collecting our information to share willy-nilly, or at least they are not allowed to do so. But, if Easy Anti-Cheat and Battle Eye fall under the EU, doesn't that technically mean they are also under the GDPR law? And if so, why do their websites confess that they collect data to be used? I don't really understand this one, so if anyone can explain this, let me know. But in closing, yes, our information is actually safe with GameGuard. At least according to law, it's safe. But the fact of the matter is, GameGuard is an awful, awful anti-cheat program that should not have been utilized at all. It is imbalanced and badly designed and it does leave your system vulnerable to rootkit attacks. But at the same time, no matter which anti-cheat was used, rootkits would still have to be installed. There are some shady problems around it, but what are they supposed to do? The sad fact is, although we're angry at SSO for using this broken cheat program, it's the cheater's fault at the end of the day. It's this fault for pushing Star Stable to this point. If people didn't feel the need to cheat, anti-cheats would not be required. So really, we should be pissed off at the cheaters, which I am. You guys are the reason this is happening. But Star Stable is the reason why we have a useless anti-cheat program, so you're both at fault. But although rootkits are dangerous in of itself, it's more what is being done with the rootkit that can cause problems and has people freaking out. Which is where the Esports Entertainment Association comes in. 
In 2013, it was revealed that an employee at ESEA had used rootkits to run some Bitcoin data mining. Essentially, they'd installed software on the kernel of these powerful machines, which could easily be used to solve hashes and so mine Bitcoins. They literally used the CPU processor's power to mine for Bitcoin, and the players didn't even know it. In total, they mined around $3,700 in a few days before they were caught. This rightly upset a large part of their community, as it was done without any sort of permission. So, if intended, a rootkit can certainly be used by a devious group to exploit your PC for their own personal gain, which is where the fear is coming from. Rootkits are dangerous, no two ways about it. It usurps your power over your computer and can, by some heavy hacking, essentially ruin your PC or Mac without your knowledge. But with all of these dangers, why have rootkits installed at all? Why use them? because there really is no other answer at the moment. In short, there is no solution to the cheating problem beyond installing rootkits, and some companies are adamant that this is the best way to go. So we're stuck with anti-cheats that are invasive because no other possibility exists at the present time to keep cheaters from ruining the game for everyone except themselves. But rootkits are still a very controversial subject, despite the fact that they are at least somewhat effective at keeping cheaters at bay. Some of them, not game guard. Jesus, not game guard. Many players today are trying to keep themselves safe by listing games that run rootkit-based anti-cheats. In short, it should be a choice we should be able to make. Thus, thrusting it on players is unfair to those who'd like to ensure they keep safe. ESEA managed to abuse their rootkit application on our systems, and this will never really leave the minds of gamers. It was an abuse of trust, and unfortunately, trust is hard to earn back once lost. But if you're worried about security, I got some really, really bad news for you. Security and safety online in this day and age is an absolute illusion. The second we connect on the internet, our information is already being collected for marketing. So really, trying to keep the bogeys out is very much impossible. And besides, every single time you install an application on your computer, you are taking a risk. But what we can demand is stability. And that is not something GameGuard has. Stability of a system is a must. And if it fails in that regard, then it is a failure of a program. So should SSO remove GameGuard? Hell yes. I think they should rather go with any other cheat program other than this one. We are already vulnerable online, but the least they can do is assure that our games are stable and that our vulnerability doesn't shoot through the roof with the application of a single anti-cheat.